Welcome to the Department of Dental Informatics presentation of Treatment Planning in Axiom. In this video, we will discuss the treatment planning process from beginning to end, so let's get started. Before treatment planning, findings and restorations must have already been charted in the patient's EHR. We have an earlier video on recording findings and restorations, so if you need a refresher course, you might want to check that video out first. We've gone ahead and entered all of this patient's findings and restorations beforehand so we can get started planning the treatment. To begin, navigate to the patient's EHR. Click on the Treatment Plan tab, and then on the folder with the green plus. This will open the Treatment Plan window. The first thing you will do here is name the plan with a brief description that describes the general subject of the treatment, so we will call this one Master Treatment Plan. Once you've named your plan, move on to the Chief Concerns box where you can enter the reasons for the visit as described by the patient or as observed by you or another clinician. The Chief Concerns field expands when you click in it, so you have pretty much unlimited space here. To the right of the Chief Concerns field, you'll notice two buttons, Objectives and Notes. Objectives are, as you might imagine, what you and the patient would like to see for the final result. So if the patient wants their restorations fixed as a final result, you can enter that here. Select Patient and click the green plus to add it to the list. If you have different provider objectives, make sure Doctor is selected and click the green plus to add your objective to the list. You can add or edit the objectives at any point in the treatment planning process. Similarly, in the Notes section, you can keep notes that apply to the treatment plan. This feature is useful as it keeps notes specific to the treatment in one location rather than lost in the general notes. With the chief concerns and objectives entered, we can move on to problems. You can think of problems as the observable or symptomatic reasons for seeking treatment. In some patients, the problems can and will stack up pretty quickly. To accommodate lengthy lists, you can click the Expand button and the Problems and Diagnoses field will expand and you can switch between the two by clicking on the appropriate tabs. If you would like to expand the fields further, you can hide the Treatment Option window by clicking the Hide button and you will be able to see an expanded view of both problems and diagnoses. To restore the Treatment Options window, click Show and the view will return to normal. There are a couple of ways to add a problem to the list. The easiest way is to just click New Item and start typing a keyword or the problem into the search box. The matching options will display below the text field and the results will narrow as you type. If you can't find the problem by typing in a keyword, you can click on the ellipsis and browse for the problem by expanding the categories and browsing the available options. After you've found your problem, enter the site and surface if applicable, and finally, include the status of the problem. When you have entered all of the required information, click on the green check to the right of the status box and add it to the problems list. Repeat this process as needed. We can now move on to entering our diagnoses. Diagnoses are different from problems as they are your clinically diagnosed conditions and findings. Adding diagnoses is basically the same process as adding problems with one extra step that involves linking a problem to a diagnosis. First, click New Item and search for the diagnosis just as you did with problems. Once you've found your diagnosis, the next field allows you to link the selected diagnosis to a problem from the list. For instance, chronic localized slight periodontitis is caused by the problems of plaque, periodontal disease, and calculus. Note that you can link a diagnosis to one problem, multiple problems, or none of them, and also that one problem can stretch across multiple diagnoses as with defective restoration on tooth 5. If you want to edit a problem or a diagnosis, you can double click on the line and change any of the values accordingly. If you just want to delete the whole thing, you can right click, choose delete, and confirm that you want to delete the entry. Now that we have all of the problems and diagnoses entered and linked, we can begin creating our planned treatment. You may create multiple options so the patient has different choices on how to proceed. Before you start creating the treatment option, you should give it a name that uniquely describes it just as you gave the name to the treatment plan. Naming the different treatment options makes them easier to find as they begin to stack up, which will happen. We will name the first option All FPD. 
To begin creating a treatment plan, simply click on the new item in the treatment plan box and begin filling in the fields. Everything is pretty straightforward, so you shouldn't have many problems here. Select the diagnosis, move to the procedure tab, and type in the code or description if you know it. If you don't know the code, you can click on the ellipsis and you will be brought to a window with a quick list, full list, and search. The quick list is a collection of the most frequently used codes. The full list contains every treatment and diagnostic code. And the search tab allows you to search for a code. The procedure description will auto-populate based on the procedure code you entered. Finally, enter the site and the surface if there are any. Phases are determined by a predefined workflow that takes into consideration the order in which treatments are generally best performed, whereas the sequence orders the treatments within a phase. You can think of the phase as months and the sequence as the days of the months. Even though phases and sequences are predetermined, they are editable if you prefer a different order of treatment based on what you think is best for your patient. You can either enter the phase and sequence while you're creating the entry if you know how you want the treatment to proceed, or you can go back and change it later by double-clicking on the line you want to edit and entering a new value. I will go ahead and complete the rest of the plan following the same steps for each line. You can select multiple teeth or multiple surfaces if the same treatment applies to all selected. If a treatment has a lab associated with it, you will be given the option to add the lab when adding the treatment. If you would like to reorder the steps in a phase, you can use the arrows to the left of the option box, select a treatment, and you can move it up and down within the phase. With the first treatment option complete, we are now ready to create a second option. We could start from the beginning and input every line as we did with the previous plan, but the new plan is very similar to the one we just created, so we will create a copy and just edit the parts that are different. To create a copy of an option, click the Copy Option button on the right side of the window. The copied plan will open in a new tab identical to the source, only it will be amended with a prefix indicating that it is a copy. Again, change the name to something unique to this particular treatment option. The first thing we want to do with the copy is to remove all the procedures that we do not want in this option. To delete a single line, you can just select the line you want to remove, right-click, and choose Delete Treatment. If it's a consecutive series that you want to remove, click the first procedure that you want to remove, hold Shift, then click the last treatment in the series right-click and choose Delete Treatment. It is important to point out that you can choose Delete Treatment or Delete Option. You'll want to be sure to select Delete Treatment when you're editing the copy, or any treatment option for that matter, as clicking Delete Option will delete the whole option and you'll have to start over. Since this option will have no bridges, we can leave it as is and move on to creating the rest of the treatment options. Now that we have all of the treatment options created, we can review each one. If you're a student, you can now present the treatment plan options to faculty and any consulting clinics that may be involved in the treatment. If faculty requests change to the treatment plan, make the changes and resubmit for approval before presenting the treatment options to the patient. To print out all of the options at once, click on the down arrow to the right of the print button and choose print all options. This will quickly print out the options you've created without having to print them out individually. Included in the printout is one copy of the treatment plan overview, including the description, chief concerns, objectives, problems, and diagnoses. The printout will also include one copy of each treatment option. Each option is organized by phase with the total cost of each phase, the total cost of the entire treatment, and the total cost that insurance will cover. The patient will review the options and inform you of the plan that works best for them. 
Faculty will also review the plan and sign off in Axiom by logging in with their credentials. With faculty approval, the text changes from blue to green. At this point, changes can still be made with faculty approval. Should you need to make a change, right-click on the option and choose Reopen option. Axiom will prompt for faculty login credentials, unless it's faculty who is logged in and making the change, and with the option Reopen, the text will change back to blue and changes can be made. Faculty will have to reapprove the edited option before it can be saved and included in the treatment plan. After the patient has reviewed the options and is ready to agree to a plan, click the Patient Accept slash Print button. Different year students will require different faculty to sign off on their treatment plans. A faculty member will log in with their credentials and approve the option. Dr. Rattan will approve DS2s, Dr. Malasro will approve DS3s, and the GPD will approve DS4s. After faculty approval, a detailed version of the accepted treatment option will pop up, which you can print out for the patient. When you close this window, a signature box will come up where your patient can sign using a Topaz signature pad. When the plan has been approved and the patient is signed off, the text of the option will change from green to black. Note that the other treatment option tabs have been grayed out and the text in those tabs is still blue. Although these plans will not be used and are not approved, they will stay in the patient's chart for future reference. In addition to being found in the treatment plan tab, your plan is now also found in the treatment history. At this point, you will notice the step codes have been automatically added. Even though the treatment plan has been approved and signed by the patient, you can rephase and sequence the plan in the treatment plan module by double-clicking on the procedure line you wish to change. This concludes the Department of Dental Informatics presentation of Treatment Planning and Axiom. If you have any questions, you can always call our office at 55481 or watch the video again. Thanks for watching.